What's up, everyone? It's Guhami here for Loudwire, and I'm sitting with Josh Scogan from The Chariot. Thank you so much for visiting us today. It's good to be here. All right. Uh, so, a lot of people probably already know you as the former vocalist for Norma Jean. So, if if uh, just an oblivious Norma Jean fan who had never really heard anything from The Chariot was to walk into one of your gigs, what would you tell them to expect? Um. Well, uh, uh, hopefully they would expect some a fun time, and uh, yeah, just some loud music and probably some feedback. That's about what to expect a lot from. Of feedback. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the this new record that you just put out, uh, One Wing, is it's a really weird, eclectic, diverse uh, record. Uh, how would you compare One Wing to your previous albums? What did you try to accomplish with this one uh, that you didn't quite do with the last? Um, well, I feel like uh, with every record we we just sit down and write whatever that record's supposed to be. We we never really like compare it to another record or you know our old records or anything or um, you know any of that. But I do feel like at the end of the day, the the end product I feel like is sort of a um, I don't know. I feel like all the artistic avenues that we sort of crossed, we we tried we we tried to go further with that. You know, um, with every album, we're always you know as any artist would, you try to expand your boundaries and and you know break down walls and stuff. You know, and and um, and so with with uh, every album, we've we've tried to do that. And I feel like we're more and more comfortable as musicians and more and more comfortable together. Um, and so, therefore, one wing I feel like uh, reaped the benefit of a lot of um, uh, a lot of successes and a lot of failures. You know, there's a lot of things that we have a great uh, we think we have a great idea, but at the end of the day, it's not all. You know, we we so it didn't meet our expectations, so we'll delete it. You know, and uh, you can classify that as a, a failure. But at the end of the day, we feel like that all, it's all those things that gr that help make us who we are as well. And so I think One Wing sort of reaps the benefit, um, and I, and I would I would like to think that every record you know we we ever do will will keep reaping those benefits you know and 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 uh, the good and the bad you know so um, but yeah you know here we are on One Wing and I feel like uh, you know just the comfort levels that we had as a band and with each other was was uh, you know was 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 a, a real made it a real good time to just explore every uh, opportunity you know if we wanted to throw a song with just a piano and vocals we tried it you know and if we wanted to do so, a huge like western part in a in a song we did it you know and uh we didn't have any like uh fears about going down those roads yeah so it's cool and when you say that stuff it like literally it is exactly that in the middle of a very very heavy <laughs> metal record there is a, a random woman just kind of comes in and starts singing uh, you're screaming over a piano part at one point, and there is a serious country bumpkin hoedown in the middle of one of the tracks. Uh, how do you maintain that balance with your music? Well, again, it's not a pre-planned, okay, make sure we, we still sound like the chariot. Like, we are the chariot, so we're going to sound like the chariot. You know, whatever we want to do, we want to do it. And um, and as artists, I think every, you know, you're ne you never want to get boxed in and, Oh, you're whatever you know, punk rock. You're your metalcore. You're your your uh, you know, mathcore. Whatever any of that means. Like we never care or, or or you know think about those things. Like you can call it what you want, but at the end of the day, like we're just there to make that album and that and 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 make that one song, which will be a part of that album, and, and make that one part, which will be a part of that song, which will be a part of that album. You know, it's it's uh, it's really not a, a preconceived you know uh balance and checkpoint of like okay make sure we, you know we have the with the weird stuff and the normal stuff like it's just we just write and whatever we feel like is best for that album at that time in our sort of brain space that's what we'll do you know and so it, and then you got one wing so <laughs> yeah and uh, and in that brain space uh was there anything that you wrote for one wing that you kind of looked back on and say you know this may be uh, weird just for the sake of being weird and, and kind of took it out yeah there's plenty of things there, uh, there's a hundred with every one song you hear there's probably hundreds that you'll never hear or maybe you'll hear later um, um, with one wing I don't I, I can't think of any examples but there may be but anyway like I know with other albums you know we 
we'll have something on this on the CD, and people don't know that we actually maybe attempted it a couple albums before, or okay. the the album before, or whatever you know. Because, but yeah, we I think that's the the um, you know we're our own worst critics, you know, and 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 I think that's a that's healthy, you know. But um, but at the end of the day, once it's released, we all love it, we all enjoy it, and that's the thing is we don't want to be. Uh, you know, we don't we we want to try whatever and have that opportunity to be able to try it, and then at the end of the day, if we're like, yeah, that was a good idea, but it didn't work, we'll oh, be the, we'll yeah. be the first one to chop it off and be like, yeah, maybe next record, maybe not, you know. So there's plenty of things that that ended up on the uh, cutting room floor, as it were. And another interesting aspect about One Wing is that each uh, track is just a single mm -hmm. word that forms a sentence, and that sentence is. Forget not your first love. Speak in tongues and cheek. Yeah. Uh, what's the significance of that title? Um, well, those two sentences sort of in a nutshell kind of wrap up sort of where we are as a band, uh, where I am as an individual, you know. Um, this is our fifth record, and uh, <clears throat> so with us, you know, um, it's a fifth record, you know. I, I never in a million years dreamed I'd be here able to, to be, you know, putting out a, a fifth record and... Um, so to to remember your first love and all that, you know, that's something that applies a lot in in our lives every day. And and I think not just with us, I think everybody can sort of uh, reap some benefit from that, you know, because um, in this world that we live in, you know, like especially the music world, it's always changing, always shifting. You know, you got big budgets today, little budgets tomorrow. You got no budgets. You got uh, contracts. You got this deal. The deal no longer exists. You got you know everything's changing always. But um, at the end of the day, I'm in a band, and I, I, when I was thinking about being in a band, I thought about playing shows. You know what I mean? When I was yeah. a kid, like, you know, stage diving off of my uh, my bed, it was, you know, at a show, you know, playing a show. And that and that's sort of the, the, the very, uh, the first love that, that, you know, and that doesn't have to change, you know, and... And um, you know, so so that is sort of the remember your first love, you know, or forget not your first love. That's that's that world, you know. And then um, to speak in tongues in cheek is uh, we wanted a sentence that, that that sort of captivated the idea of like you know in this life there's things that you should get very deep with, you know, you should you should ver take very seriously, um, and you should get very deep with certain things, you know. But while doing that, you know. You know, obviously the pun of uh, you know take you know, uh, is very tongue in cheek. You know, like the pun of like that is like don't you know don't ever be able to not make fun of yourself or to poke fun or or to you know there's no sense in hovering around being a rain cloud all the time. You know, but in in, in to, you know find the joys in life and and laugh and then you know have fun with it. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, and um, but in doing that, I feel like there are deeper things in life that we need to explore and that we need to take very seriously. You know, love and and uh, and uh, you know the questions that we should all ask and and all those things. I feel like those are very important. And in, in, in as a band, we find ourselves on that balance every day. Like certain things, we take very very seriously the music and the and the the, the love and the, the the people that we meet and all this. These are very very serious things. But you know, we always you know never want to be like. And unable to laugh, and un unable to like poke fun at it, well, you know, it is because it's because what's the point of just hovering around like a rain cloud, you know? I think there's enough of that anyway. So, so yeah, the, those two sentences combined really just sort of summed up kind of um, just kind of where we're at as a band and and what we, you know, even as people, you know, and I think they can relate to uh, much more than just the music scene, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think people can reach out and grab a hold of that no matter where they're at you know yeah and speaking of that you know following storm cloud uh you guys uh, i read online that you asked billy corrigan to be a part of that <laughs> to be a part of this record and uh i think it was through a, a twitter message but he, he didn't get back to you unfortunately right initially it was a twitter message um it, it was uh it, it uh, we basically, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Billy Corgan and, and a lot of things he's done. But um, in the beginning, obviously, Smashing Pumpkins and and just the that, I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen Smashing Pumpkins two or three times now, back on like Melancholy and a few other wow. times. But um, but uh, but yeah. So 
I mean, obviously we knew it was a lofty goal, but you know, it would have been a dream come true. And so the initial thing was a Twitter. Um, cause, uh, I, I noticed he was on it a lot and, you know, re- talked to people. So I was like, Oh, maybe you'll see it. Who knows, you know, my, it's worth a try. And then, um, through some other avenues, which I won't get into, but basically we did reach out to him. We actually got in touch with him and, uh, and he wrote us back an email and it, and it said, you know, Hey, like I, I really dig the band. I'm really into it. Um, it's only because of scheduling that, I, that I'm not going to be able to do this. So, so it, we lost our minds like we were just like i mean i guess that's bad news but we were just like you know so stoked like we were literally like i i i feel like i got that email i think we were in europe or something but it, i got the email for us it was like maybe three or four in the morning and i went around waking everybody up i was like because ah, we're dorks you know what i mean like we just like i mean i, I you know we, we're just dorks we I, i'm still a fan of music you know i'm still a fan i like i like watching bands play you know i mean i i get to tour with some of these bands, which is a very humbling experience, but, you know, you, nine times out of ten, you'll see me on side stage just watching, you know, with my mouth open, because I, I just, am, I'm a fan of music, and I, and I still just like, you know, it's like, oh, we get to play, that rules, you know, I just, I'm just stoked that I get to watch this band, you know what I mean, so, uh, so yeah, you know, that, that was a very cool experience for us to even just to have, to hear that, you know, and hear back from them and stuff, so. Yeah, that's really, really cool, and uh, so, Going back to Norman Jean a little bit, uh, it was right after you left that this sort of metalcore explosion just kind of happened. All these metalcore bands were becoming super, super popular in the underground. And even though you were with the Chariot at the time when that was happening, and I'm sure that you're very happy with the way that was going, was there any part of you that was feeling any uh, negative feelings towards the band members or perhaps any jealousy, you know, saying, oh, man, it, it should have been me up there, <laughs> you know? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, w- uh, you know, it it wasn't like I left and then everything. So, I mean, we we were t- kind of taking a fast track upwards, uh, as it were, uh, you know, so I, I wasn't ignorant to what was happening and about to happen even more so. Um, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I was very, anything that would happen, I was very proud of the band. You know, it was, it was definitely, I was, I was around for the inception of the band you know so we uh so you know when you know that i would stay in contact and they're like oh we're going out with this band i'm like that rules you know i'm very excited we've always been very good friends through the whole process through everything uh the chariots first couple of shows were with norma jean um they took take us on a few tours you know uh we just did a europe tour earlier this year with them um so you know there's several things that you know they they've really befriended us and and uh you know uh, helped us out it just band on you know band and um but yeah we've always stayed in good contact we've always been um you know i, I would do anything to I'd do anything for him I, i'd do anything to help him out even more I, you know it was always a very uh pleasurable uh uh split or whatever you know and um and yeah and they, they actually you know uh they called me once and to to uh to fill in on this uh mexico tour they did you know they just they just wow. called me and it was like you know the chariot was full swing but we weren't on tour at the time and you know they just called me and, and i guess um <clears throat> cory had you know just just had gotten real sick and his voice was just like hurting him and stuff so um they hit me up and i was like sure you know uh about 12 hours later i was on an air, airplane uh to to uh guadalajara or something and yeah, and I, and I, you know, I was like reading because you know, I knew all the songs I had done originally, but they they had uh, I think they were on Redeemer at the time, and so I was having to like really learn all the all his lyrics, you know, that um, I knew just because I'm a fan of the band and and I love the music they've written, but you know, just knowing word for word, you know, I had to like study up. So I'm like on the plane with like notes and like you know, just like like all the stuff and like iPods in my ear, you know. So, but yeah, it was uh, always a very pleasant. Um, experience, you know, never, never anything negative. God, some of those old school fans during those, they must have just gone crazy to see you up there with the band again. Uh, yeah, well, it was funny because it was Mexico, so they've never seen, at that point, they had never seen either version of the, the band. Okay. So it was really funny because, you know, we actually got, uh, well, I say we, you know, we, we actually got a lot of, uh, funny comments from people in the states like what are you doing blah, blah, blah. but it's like yo we, we've toured with norma jean several times you know we we uh you know we always like do some sort of collaboration of some sort okay. because it's it's no big deal you know but um but uh but yeah so yeah it's it's never never been anything negative or weird or anything like that you know it's always a very uh, pleasurable experience so which is the way i 
think it should be more often because uh, I don't know. Maybe if you're friends first and a band second, these things can happen a lot more easier. But you know, I know, I know business kind of gets involved in most cases and stuff. It has to, I guess, to some degree. But for us, we were just friends and we just played music together. And, and uh, so you know, whatever you did, you supported your friend. You know what I mean? Obviously, so. Uh, does the does the chariot have any touring plans at this moment? Yeah, um, we actually in uh, in October, uh, I think, uh, yeah, October sometime we're going out with uh, the band for today, um, and then in November December we're doing uh, Every Time I Die, um, oh, which will be great, cool. um, and uh, Let Live uh, they're on that tour as well, um, and Kills and Thrills, which uh, uh, we're big fans of all those bands and. Um, we we know every time I die really well, so that's going to be very uh, awesome just to hang out every night, you know. And then Let Live, we've met a couple times. They seem like the best dudes, and uh, same with Kills and Thrills. So, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a – I haven't been this – I haven't looked looked forward to a tour this, this hard and, and uh, haven't been this excited, you know, in a long time. Uh, I enjoy most every tour we do, but this one's just going to be, like, you know, tenfold, so. Cool. And a last question – uh, being a father is going to be a very different experience. Uh, mm -hmm. One, being a musician, um, obviously the two are going to clash at times. But what would you say uh, is the was the overall most rewarding experience? Is it fatherhood or uh, your life in music? Uh, <laughs> um, I would say definitely fatherhood. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, it's the right answer. I think. Yeah, I think I have to give. No, I, I truly do believe that. I, I mean. You know, um, to being a, in a band is it's awesome, and I, and I have no complaints. You know, but um, but it's funny because you know people can take it more seriously than they should and stuff. You know, and they they forget like you know there's uh there's five individuals that make up that band or four or whatever the case may be. You know, and uh, and the music's fun. It's 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 an art. You know, it's an art form, and I believe in it, and I believe in it uh, heart and soul. You know. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, to compare it to family or to compare it to, uh, I don't know, even like friendships that you have at home where that that's someone that you grew up with your whole life or whatever the case may be, um, it's, it's it's something you can't really compare. You know, I mean, making art and and the ability to do so is is awesome, and the fact that it can reach out and sort of touch so many people and and that that's great and very humbling. But you, you can't really compare that to you know the love of your best friend or whatever being your wife or whatever you know what i mean and like uh it's two separate worlds you know and so yeah i mean it'd be hard you know it's but you know the family is obviously like you know just as awesome as being in a band is family is definitely you know leaps and steps and bounds like i think uh more of a reality of of you know where we are you know because i mean you know fast forward five years fast forward ten years like nobody's gonna know what the chariot is or anything like that, you know what I mean? But the, but uh, but family is going to be there, you know. It's going to be reality, you know what I mean? So, um, I love art, and again, I'm a big believer. But obviously, there's you know, everything has its place, you know. All right. Well, thank you so much for for visiting us today. Buy this record when it comes out. <laughs> One wing by the chariot. It's really good. I think a lot of people are really going to like it. <laughs>